Hello and welcome to Expeditions Room. I'm Shadow Coast and welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to do a detailed overview of classes, subclasses, and associated skills, both active and passive. We're going to go through the four main classes, Princeps, which is your tank, Velus, which is your melee DPS, Sagittarius, your range DPS, and Triarius, your basic support characters or class. So, jumping right in, let's go with Princeps. This is your effective tank class. There are three subclasses, Defender, Vanguard, Veteran. One thing that I really like about this game is that you can mix and match from the three different trees for characters. However, that will impact your ability to get some of these later moves, which are, not surprisingly, pretty awesome. A few things to note, when you see moves that have the little... Uh, call it orange diamond. This means that you can use this move once per turn indefinitely throughout your engagement. So you can use it over and over again. However, if you do see moves that have, let me find one here, a dark red square, these moves are limited in use per engagement. So Bull Rush here, for example, you can only use once per an engagement so when you enter a fight you can only use this one time during that fight although it does reset for subsequent fights so keep that in mind all right without further ado let's go through each one in detail looking at active and passive skills i'm going to kind of go down the line across the board starting with defender we start with brace which allows you to regain two stacks of strong for each stack, 25% of the character's shield strength maximum is restored at the beginning of their turn. One stack is lost every time the shield takes a hit. Effectively, shields in this game act as additional, call it, hit points. So basically, they absorb damage. The way it works is that each shield has different stacks of strong. And effectively, based on your stacks of strong, that's how much of the shield strength you will regain. So, for example, if we have a shield strength of 2 and we have 2 strong, let's say we get hit and that 2, right, the shield, which is giving us basically 2 hit points, is reduced to 0. If we have 2 stacks of strong, the next turn it will replenish to 2 stacks. So basically we can take 2 hits from the shield again. However, we lose a stack of strong once it is used to replenish it. So effectively what Brace is doing is acting are adding strong to your character, which allows you to continue to replenish your shield over time. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a little confusing, but if you watch some combat, it'll make more sense. Coming down from there, we have Fortress. This is a passive skill, which increases or improves brace and restores an additional 25% shield strength per stack of strong. So effectively, this will be critical. As you get better shields, you can keep that shield just replenishing at a higher level over and over again, basically absorbing damage indefinitely, ideally. From there, we have our next active skill in the Defender Tree, and that is Protect. This allows you to direct damage dealt to a friendly adjacent target, and it will be halved and shared between you and the target. So basically, you're sharing damage uh, with friendly ally targets next to you. So this applies protected to allies. Damage taken will be halved and shared with the protecting character. So that would be this character, the tank character. And it can be further buffed by guardian, which we'll see in a minute. It also pr applies protecting to self, um, which, which is basically doing the same thing. We're absorbing damage uh, that allies will take. And finally, we have a Guardian Angel. Protected now additionally redirects status effects towards the protecting character. So effectively, if you're going to have a bleed or something like that, that status effect will now be applied to your tank character versus the allied character it was initially meant for. So this tree is really focused on absorbing damage and replenishing your shield. One key thing to note here, Guardian Angel does require five skill points um, in this ability branch to unlock this skill. All right, next we have Bastion. This gives plus 10 resistance and plus 10 maximum resistance. So effectively this reduces the ability for enemy characters to apply negative status effects to you or debuffs. From there we have an active skill. This is limited to three uses per engagement. You can see that in the three red squares at the top right. 
And this applies Jerry Rig to self and basically negate status effects such as shield bo broken, exposed, sundered. This is really critical because effectively what will happen is enemies will use Pylum uh, to try to break or remove your shield stacks. And this will remove that. So if your shield's broken or you're exposed or you're sundered, this inhibits the ability to replenish your shield and absorb that additional damage. So if you're going to go for a shield heavy tank character, this is going to be a go-to to pick up. From there, we have a passive shake it off. 20% chance at the beginning of your turn to automatically cure one negative status effect currently affecting you. And then when we upgrade it, it's plus 30% to remove a negative status effect. This is a awesome move. If you're going for a pure tank character, you're gonna to wanna to pick it up um, as soon as possible, probably towards uh, the middle of the game. You'll be able to get it. And then finally, we have shield wall. Apply shield walled and exhausted um, to your character. So this basically um, increases your shield strength, plus 250% shield strength maximum. So it's a big buff up. Uh, but then you become exhausted and lose all strong stacks. Cannot restore shield strength at the beginning of the turn. So this basically limits or expends all of your strong stacks. So you're not going to replenish for the next turn. So if you send your character out there and you need to buff them up uh, to take a bunch of damage, this is the move. You can only use it once per engagement. And you do need five skill points in the tree before you can pick it up. Moving over to Vanguard. Vanguard is more about debuffing enemies in general, uh, if I were to characterize it. Uh, but it still has a lot of tanky elements of keeping you alive. So, going down the first kind of branch within Vanguard, we have Hardened. This allows you to increase your health up by 20% maximum. Always useful. Uh, the next, we have another passive, which increases shield damage. So, effectively allows you to... Um, expend additional shield damage so when you pick up shields you'll have moves associated with that shield some of them could be like a bash or something like that that does damage this is buffing that damage you can do up to a um, total of 60 percent 20 percent for each one up to three times then the first active skill in this particular um, vertical is taunt so you can taunt all enemies in a range of six hexes and effectively, enemies will attack you instead of your allies. This is unlimited use, um, but excuse me, unlimited use within the engagement. And again, uh, you can only use one move per turn. Spe um, something to keep in mind. That's just a mechanic of the game, which we can cover or we do cover in combat uh, mechanics if you want to check that out. And finally, we have Bull Rush. This is a one use per engagement. It uh, inflicts 2 to 5 bludgeoning damage. You move in a straight line hitting all characters in your way, including your allies. So you can have friendly fire with this move. It also applies knockdown to characters, making them unable to take any actions. They cannot do block, dodge, parry, or resist attacks. Standing up will cost the character half their movement. So this is, again, a once per engagement move. If you are able to line up, um, two or three enemies. This is a devastating move, rendering them basically useless for an entire turn, um, knocking them down. It does require seven skill points in the ability branch to unlock this skill. And again, you can only use it once per turn. Okay. Over here, we have Frighten. This is where I was talking about debuffing enemies. Minus 10 morale to all enemies within range. Area of effect, 2 hex radius. So it is not that far. You have to get close to enemies for this to work. Um, it can affect multiple targets, um, which is great. From there, we have another active move, fall, Flawless Defense. You can use this three turns, three times per turn. It does require one skill point in the tree or the branch and applies defending to self. All resistance are set to equal the value of the highest resistance and maximum resistance is increased by 10%, but movement is reduced by three. So effectively, if you're going in and you believe you're going to take a lot of negative status effects, you basically can buff up your resistance to resist those status effects uh, to the best degree possible with flawless defense. You can use it three turn times per engagement. Then we have a passive Adrenaline Junkie. Adrenaline Junkie uh, provides a plus 50% damage bonus when health is less than 25% uh, 
of health maximum. Uh, you must spend four skill points in this ability branch to unlock this skill, uh, which is important. All right, Avenger. This is a pretty interesting passive skill. When an ally is incapacitated or killed, shield strength is restored to full and damage is increased by 20% for the rest of the encounter. It does require seven skill points in the ability branch to unlock. Um, you know, this really seems like uh, everything's going wrong and you need your tank to stand up and start outputting some more damage move. Uh, so it's something that's interesting. Moving over to Veteran, uh, Veteran is kind of a mix of like debuffing and kind of buffing, if you could call it that, um, with some, you know, heavy tank elements as to be expected. So to begin with, going down this particular vertical, we have Nimble. This reduces the movement reduction from wearing light or heavy armor. Um, so effectively, what this allows you to do is reduce the movement penalty of wearing armor so you can move further playing this game you'll notice that the heavier the tank or heavier the armor the lower or fewer movement points you have so that this com combats it so it allows you to move around further then we have headbutt uh you do require one skill point in this ability branch you can use this three times for engagement sets movement to zero applies weakened if target is already weakened or harried they will be stunned um, which is great. So weaken enemies uh, reduced damage by fit per, um, their damage is reduced by 50%, and it can apply stunned enemies. Um, and it cannot be, yeah, stunned enemies cannot block, dodge, parry, or resist attacks. So again, you can use this three times per engagement. Then we have passive battering ram uh, twice. We can increase our base damage to equip shield up to plus three, um, which is great. So if you're using a lot of the shield bashing um, abilities, uh, this is this is a good one. Uh, doing some uh, combination of these looks to really maximize that. Uh, that's something we're gonna have to explore. I am using the demo version, so I haven't been able to get too deep into a really customizing characters yet with loadouts and weapons and equipment. And finally, in this vertical, we have Warcry. This is a one hex radius, affects multiple targets, applies stuns to enemies. This is a one use per engagement, and it does require seven skill points. Notice the upgrade allows you to go to plus one hex radius, so then two hex radius. So this is something where you really want to have your character out there surrounded um, so you can stun them. Next, in our final vertical in Veteran, we have Knockdown. This is a two use. Um, ability applies knockdown to enemies so again they're unable to dodge parry or resist attacks standing up will cost them half their movement you can use this twice per engagement does two to three um, bludgeoning damage then we have a passive opportunist your attacks of opportunity will also apply weaken which basically reduces the enemy um, damage so this one does require one skill point in the in the vertical so one of the things that i will be doing is trying to pick up opportunist um, basically, the plan will be to position my characters to try to get attacks of opportunity to maximize damage and then being applied or applying weak, um, uh, a weakening, weakened to enemies will be great because it reduces damage that we have. And then I will be fully upgrading this. Um, one of the questions stands is, do I try to get this earlier or later? Because uh, I most likely will be prioritizing getting Guardian Angel based off my playstyle. But we will see in my playthrough. Be sure to check that out if, if you're interested on when the game releases. Next, we have Stand Fast Active Skill. Uh, area of effect 2 hex radius. It can affect multiple targets. This is basically buffing or removing debuffs um, from our allies. So other character units. So we can remove stunned, stuck, and knocked down from allies. It requires 4 skill points in this ability branch to unlock. And finally, we have a movable grants primitive immunity against getting moved by rebuke, shove, shield, push, push, and shove, and counter advance. Requires seven skill points. All in all, um, tank looks good. Interesting moves. We're going to move over to Veles. Keep this rolling. This is a much longer video than I anticipated, so I'm going to try to speed it up. Here we go. There are three main classes, Assassin, Duelist, Brawler. Assassin, not surprisingly, focuses on more single target DPS. Duelist um, really focuses on 
uh, basically um, increasing your ability to dodge attacks. So you get in the middle of it and you reduce damage you take more or less. Brawler is a lot about unarmed damage um, and kind of, uh, if I were to characterize it, kind of self-buffing um, to give yourself more movement and action and stuff like that. So let's get started with Assassin. Uh, we have Cheap Shot, Apply Savage itself, 100% critical chance for the next attack by this character. The way Velus works is you have to build focus. So you build focus through your, call it primary attack options based off the weapons you have. Uh, they'll yield focus uh, the vast majority of time. Um, and then you can expend focus on these different moves that you can pick up across all three of these trees. Um, so this is great. Assassinate plus 40% damage against enemy leaders. So that's great if you want to take out those leaders. Um, you can upgrade your maximum focus. This is critical because you're going to need more focus to do more moves and higher tier moves. And then we have Rush. Restore your action point. You can do this twice um, in combat, but it requires six focus, which is a lot. And you must have um, seven skill points in this ability branch to unlock this skill. Uh, here, basically, when you upgrade it, you reduce the focus cost and you gain a skill charge, uh, which is nice. Over here, we have Lone Wolf. Become Prowling if the nearest ally is at least six X's away. Uh, critical chance is doubled and the character has 20% dodge chance. Prowling, prowling is removed if an ally gets close, so you have to be kind of out by yourself. Sneak Attack uh, drives three to six piercing damage, generates one focus. So you can use this move. It doesn't require focus. And Sneak Attack deals plus 50% damage on your two first turns, um, which is nice. You have to get into position uh, quickly to try to use it, I think. Marathon applies inexhaustible to self. Movement is unlimited until the character stops moving. Um, this one, I'm not sure how this works in game, but it is very compelling because effectively it'll allow you to hypothetically move indefinitely. It does require four skill points in this branch to unlock. And finally, we have First Strike deals 50% increased damage to targets with full health. So that's helpful to burning down targets with full health. It does require seven skill points. Duelist. Um, Shiv uses uh, three focus, but then you basically do three, two to three, three, uh, three piercing damage. Um, and it does not cost an action point. So if you're trying to finish off enemies, this is a great move to use. Then we have Bloodthirsty. Killing an enemy grants one stack of Bloodthirsty. Um, applies Bloodthirsty to self plus 5% damage per stack. And you can get this up to 15% damage per stack, which is fantastic. Um, so I'll probably be building this out. Um, you can see here, I was kind of toying around with some other moves to see how they work. Kill on ground. You can use this three times. It does require two skills, um, skill points in the tree. Finish off an incapacitated, incapacitated character and inflict minus 10 morale on nearby enemies. You can use this three times. Uh, area of effect, five hex radius. So this is good uh, for eliminating enemies and reducing morale uh, to help them break or faster. And then finally we have quick witted plus one focus per attack. This is phenomenal because you can generate uh, more focus per attack, which is great. It does require five, five skill points in the ability branch. Over here we have grants uh, born ready grants 30% of max focus at the beginning of combat and then up to 60% at the beginning of combat. So basically you have um, your focus fill up quicker so you can do more. Dodge applies dodge itself. The next attack against character has a 50% chance to inflict no damage or status effects. So basically you can kind of dodge the enemy. Uh, slippery dodge will last until the beginning of the character's next turn and will no longer end after the first attack. Um, this is great. It does require two skill points in the ability branch. Um, basically you can maintain your dodge for longer. Then we have a dual uh, which calls out a specific enemy, making your next attack against them more powerful. Range 12 hexes applies challenge to enemies. The next attack against the character from the dueling enemy will deal double damage and apply stunned and bleeding. Um, so effectively, uh, you can, I guess, ISO an enemy. Uh, you can do this once per engagement. It requires two focus and five skill points to pick up. Not exactly sure how this will work, but something we're going to probably experiment with. 
Next, we have Brawler. Brawler applies... Uh, sorry, in the first tree, we have Tactical Advance. The character will not incur attacks of opportunity. This one is awesome. Tactical also grants plus three movement to maximum. This is something that I would probably pick up early because it allows you to move around um, unencumbered to, to target and focus down enemies that you need to. So something I'll probably be picking up early. Then we have, um, note it does take two focus though. It is a move, so it's not something you can just do indefinitely like a passive. A clear path upon clinging an enemy, replenish three movement points for all nearby allies. Requires one skill point in the tree. Pugilist passive effect plus one focus per attack when using any unarmed skill. Uh, you must spend four skill points in the tree to unlock this one. And then Reaper applies reaping to self. Every time the character kills an enemy, their action point is replenished. All use skills are reset and movement is fully restored. You can use this once. In combat, it requires two focus and seven skill points in the tree. Next, we have prank ration. Prank ration? Increase on our damage by 100%. So, Brawler, not surprisingly, you want to use your fists. Faint, move through a hex occupied by an enemy, ending up in the hex behind them. So, this allows you to basically flank them. Um, I'm not sure uh, what this use cost is. I think this might be a demo glitch, so we'll have to see in the final version. Boast applies boasting to self. If the character's next attack kills an enemy character, all their allies gain plus 10, plus 10 morale. If it does not, all enemies gain plus 10 morale. So basically, you can buff your team or the enemy depending on how it goes. Uh, Savage is also applied if the attack incapacitates the target. Um, two focus, four skill points required. And then finally, we have Reliable. Glancing Blow refunds the spent action point. This is huge, especially um, when we're taking on enemy tanks uh, because Glancing Blows do partial damage. So then basically you get another shot at them. Seven skill points to, to pick up this passive. So that is Veles. Moving on, we are heading over to Sagittarius. The four main classes are Marksman, Hunter, Sniper, I'm not sure how I would characterize these subclasses. Um, excuse me, there are th three subclasses are hunt marksman, hunter, sniper. I'm not sure how I would characterize these. Um, they're all different in their own right. Let's jump in and start with marksman. Interrupt. This is your Overwatch ability. 100. You can set a 120 degree cone in front of you. Ranges up to 12 hexes. It is important to note that shields can deflect arrows. So if the first person to move in here has a shield, this is a useless move, but you're basically overwatching um, and you will shoot the first enemy who moves into your vision. Uh, and then you can um, upgrade this to increase the, the, uh, the angle. I'm not sure if that's worthwhile, but it's something to think about. From here, we have passive kill vigilant interrupting can now attack two targets before it ends. I recommend getting this one uh, if you're picking this up pretty quickly because you basically get two free shots on two different enemy characters if they move in. From there, we have a gracing shot it applies gracing itself. The character's next range attack will deal slashing damage. Gracing shot also deals plus 50% extra damage when you upgrade it. Um, this is great. It does require two skill points. You can use it three times per encounter or engagement. Steady hands plus 100% critical chance for all range reaction attacks such as interrupt and overwatch. Um, technically, interrupt is different than overwatch. I just want to call that out. Um, according to this, I view interrupt basically as an overwatch because it's doing the same thing. It requires five skill points. This is pretty fantastic because you'll deal massive damage. Point blank, 100% critical chance for range attacks against adjacent characters. Um, helpful when they get in close. Rebuke, three bludgeoning damage. Push the target one hex away from you. Requires an empty hex behind the target. You can double the damage by upgrading it. Powerful kick. This is a passive skill. Rebuke will additionally apply knock down a target. Uh, again, they're unable to block, dodge, parry, or resist. And standing up will cost them half of their... Um, movement. You can upgrade this to um, add tactical to yourself, which is nice. 
And then there is actually Overwatch. Um, five to seven piercing damage, six hex radius. This is deflected by shield. Every time an enemy within six hexes attacks an ally, the character shoots that enemy. Can only target each enemy once per turn. You can only do this once. You can only use this once per engagement. Um, and it requires five skill points to pick up in the tree. Hunter, quick shot, five to seven piercing damage. Shoots two individually selected targets with minus 30% accuracy and 30% chance to miss. Can be deflected by shields, but you can hit multiple targets. Lure, two to three bludgeoning to damage, prevents the target from using cover, applies lure to enemies. The character cannot use cover or avoid range attacks. You can use this once per turn um, and requires one skill to unlock. Pinning shot, all range hits within two X's apply crippled. This reduces the enemy's movement by 50%. Requires four skill points in the tree. And finally, Barrage applies barraging to self. Every time the character shoots a target, they regain their action point. Accuracy is reduced by 30%. You can use this once per turn. Requires seven skill points to unlock. Hunter, versatile. Performing attack makes you versatile. If the attack was a melee attack, versatile improves your next range attack. If the attack was a range attack, versatile improves your next melee attack. It's kind of one or the other. Um, applies range versatile to self. The character's next range attack deals plus 50% damage. Or if it's the other one, get plus 50% melee damage. Interesting kind of move or passive. From there we have Squirmisher. Versatile has 100% chance, critical chance. The previous attack was a killing blow. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure how that works. You need one skill point to, to, to work. Um, we'll see how that one works in game. I'm a little confused. Arrow stab, three to four piercing damage. Stab an adjacent target for half damage and inflicting bleeding. If the target is flanked, they also become stunned. Oh, wow, that's great. You can get them flanked. Applies bleeding to enemy, minus two health per stack each turn. And you can get stunned, requires four skill points in the tree. And finally, we have find weakness. At the beginning of every round, you will gain the status effect finding weakness. Applies finding weakness to self. The character's next range attack will apply either bleeding, weakened, or harried. Seven skill points for this one. It's a pretty cool move. And finally, we have Sniper. Ranging shot, range 12 hexes, area effect two, um, two hex radius, affects multiple target, applies spotted to hexes. Range attacks against this target deal full damage regardless of distance. This is great because the way ranged um, targeting works is that uh, after you get out of a certain range, your damage dealt is diminishes very quickly, close to zero. So if you're looking to kind of pick off targets that are going to be moving around and trying to get out of your range, that is a great move. Then we have Spotter. Ranging shot now shoots two arrows. That's great because you can hit two different areas or groupings. Eagle Eye applies Eagle Eye to sell full range damage at any distance up to the maximum range. Um, this is a one use. Uh, and effectively you can guarantee that you're going to do full damage as long as it's not blocked um, with this. So this is a, a great, great move if you're trying to finish someone off um, or focus fire someone down. Once per turn or per engagement requires four skill points to use in the tree. And then seize ground, start combat with double movement for the first two turns. Killing a target further away than 12 hexes will replenish charge of a random weapon skill. Interesting. You must spend seven skill points in this ability branch to unlock this skill. All right, final tree and marksman. Uh, this gives you plus two accuracy, upgraded to plus four accuracy. Um, that's important on your kind of hit percentages and the damage you're gonna deal from the range. Uh, mark target, range 12 hexes applies mark to enemies. The next range attack against this character will deal double damage. This is fantastic um, to focus fire down single enemies. Walk your shots, plus two optimal range does not affect maximum range. Plus four optimal range does not affect maximum range for skill points. So effectively what this is doing is, is that um, your optimal range is the range where you can do full damage and then any time anywhere after that your damage diminishes so walk your shot basically extends your optimal range to probably the maximum range so as far as the the arrow can go and hit you're gonna probably do full damage if you fully upgrade this up to plus six I believe uh, total 
Then finally, assist. This is a three uses per engagement. Five to seven piercing damage. Target provokes attacks. Uh, target provokes attack of opportunity if they have moved. Um, so this one will be an active skill. I think this might work like an Overwatch type thing. Um, I'm not sure how this one will work in practice. We'll have to see. Finally, we have Triarius. The three subclasses are Medic, Flag Bearer, Destroyer. Um, basically, Medic focuses on kind of buffing allies. Um, flag Bearer, I'm not sure how I characterize. Destroyers focus on damage. Let's get into it. Medic, first branch down or first vertical down. Field Medic. Basically, we can upgrade the more health we restore when healing, so using bandages or other items to heal. Uh, cure. This can provoke an attack of opportunity if you are standing by an enemy. This is a two-use uh, charge per engagement, and you basically remove bleeding, burn, poison, and or burning. Uh, very helpful to have. Good as new. Cure now also restores 25% health per status effect cured. Upgraded... Um, or you must spend two skill points to unlock this uh, passive. And then finally, interference. If an enemy within your reach attacks an ally, you get to make your attack of opportunity against that enemy, uh, which is nice. So basically protecting allies, five points in this one. Then we have logistics. This increases allied movement range. Um, you can see here, I prioritize this just to get my units in moving order um, by extending how far they can move. Poisoner, 5% chance that any of your attack supply poisoned. Deals 2 poison damage. Character cannot be healed, uh, which is nice. Then we have Revive. This is a 3 use per engagement. Bring an incapacitated target back into action with 25% health. The target will retain any unused movement, but their action point will be spent. Um, this is pretty important to pick up. You need 2 skill points in the branch to get. And you can only use 3 times. Three times per engagement. Then we have Curse. This is a one use per engagement. Area of effect six hex radius. Applies weakened enemies, basically reducing all their damage, which can protect our team. Flag bearer, first vertical war horn, three uses per engagement, six hex radius, affects multiple targets, applies rally to allies, increasing their damage by 25%. Buffing our team. Guidance, downing an enemy awards plus three morale to allied characters within three hexes. We can upgrade this to plus two, so a total of plus five morale. Um, and we must have one skill point in the branch or the tree. Roos, this is a two use per engagement. All enemies within the area of effect will move out of that area. Range eight hexes, area of effect one hex, radius affects multiple targets. So effectively, if we're trying to push people back from one of our units, this is a good one to use um, to try to protect our uh, ally or other character. Embarrassing Roost. Roost now also inflicts minus 10% morale up to minus 20% or 20 morale, excuse me, minus 10 morale and minus 20 morale. We must have seven skill points to unlock this passive. Bolstering Presence. You gain Bolstering Presence, which applies bolster to all adjacent allies. Um, so this character cannot fail morale checks, uh, which is great. So when we're basically by, um, our allies, they gain this, it's like an aura. Inspire three use, uh, per engagement, restore action points to an ally who has spent theirs. Um, this is great because you have our eight range hex, uh, which basically if you're kind of standing back with your support character, you can transfer your action point to your higher damage dealers like your Veles or your Sagittarius or even your Tank for that matter. Orator Inspire now resets the target's cooldown as well, um, which is great uh, because we basically can then use multiple moves of the same move in the same turn, which is helpful. And then Rousing Speech once per engagement, five healing, restore 25% health to all allies within a six hex radius. Um, this is great to heal. Requires seven skill points in the ability branch. Finally, we have Destroyer. Death blow, four to seven bludgeoning damage, one armor shred, plus 50% damage against a target who is stunned, stuck, knocked down, or sundered. Um, so pairing this up with 
your princeps is a really good move because you can output a lot of damage armor shred is important uh enemies that are armored you have to basically de destroy or shred their armor because their armor gives them uh reduction to your damage so for example if we have a uh, seven armor and we hit and, and roll seven damage we do actually zero damage to the target although this would shred one of those armor down from seven to six next we have shredder this increases our armor shred ability um, this is probably very useful for a uh, higher tiered or uh, captain or leader enemies um, Reckless, two moves per engagement, requires four skill points, applies Reckless itself, plus 50% base damage, plus one armor shred, all resistance reduced to zero. Uh, so high risk, high reward. Um, and then finally, Sunder, four to seven bludgeoning damage, one armor shred, sets the target shield strength to zero before dealing damage to the target. The target cannot be resisted, applies Sundered enemies. Shield strength will not be restored at the beginning of the character's turn. Um, so before in Princeps, we were talking about Sundered, uh, sundered removes the or hinders the ability to replenish your shield uh, so this is kind of critical you can use it two twice per turn um, and very useful against heavily armored and shielded or heavily shielded enemies finally bringing our final vertical down the line fortune favored we can upgrade our critical chance up to 10 if we upgrade this twice plus 10 then we have quick lunge three uses per engagement one to two bludgeoning damage cannot shred armor Applies Cripple to enemies, which reduces their um, movement by 50%. Quick Feet, passive skill you will no longer. This requires one skill point. Uh, quick Feet requires four skill points in this vertical, or excuse me, in this branch. Uh, you will no longer trigger attacks of opportunity when moving around an enemy, only when disengaging. Uh, so if you're kind of sticking with the enemy and trying to flank them, you want to have an uh, attack of opportunity pretty nice move actually and finally we have finisher passive skill attacking an enemy who is stunned uh, stuck or knocked down restores 10 percent health if the attack kills the enemy the action point is refunded and the cooldown of death blow is reset um which is pretty nice finisher now restores 20 percent health requires seven skill points for this to work so there you have it we just covered all active and passive skills for all the classes and subclasses hopefully this video was helpful it was a little bit long so i do apologize i wanted to cover it in depth so you could see it and check it out i will be testing out a lot of these different moves and seeing how they work in game this game does release on january 20th that's 10 days from uh, this recording so i'm very excited uh, i do plan on posting a playthrough so if you are interested in watching that playthrough you do you do direct my content so please drop a like um, and, a, and a comment if you want to watch that playthrough. And if you did enjoy this video, please consider dropping a like for this video. I am actively trying to grow my channel, so if you do go on to find this content helpful and informative, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing and hope to see you in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Shadow Coast out.